This is the case discussion to share clinical difficulties and find the best uh, treatment. I am MC Dr. Jung Young Un. Hello. To solve the problem, we have uh, three master clinical dentists: Dr. Kim Kyung Won, Dr. Park Jong Hyun, Dr. Son Young Hee. Hello. For those who are watching the dental TV right now, on the right of the video player, there is a real-time chatting window for you to post questions to us and share comments. Go to the case to discuss. The patient is 60-year-old male. He wants the restoration at number 24 and 25. Two premolars need to be restored. However, the mesial distal distance is only 11 to 12 millimeters. It's too narrow to place two implants. What should I do? As canine guidance cannot be expected, small diameter fixture placement may not be right. If you look at the pictures, the distance in the cervical area is 13.5 and uh, the coronal area 11.5 millimeters. When two premolars are missing, the mesial distal distance is 14 to 15 millimeters, but uh, the space is pretty tight here. What do you think of this case? As I see it, this is rather ambiguous. Too narrow for two premolars. I believe the dentist who sent this case indicated on the panorama. The distal equipment is very well calibrated. The vertical length is pretty accurate, but horizontal distance indication like that is not quite right. I'm not sure about the space. Too tight for two implants and too wide for one. This is a common clinical case. If some time has passed since the extraction and the number six is mesially tilted, restoring number four and five is not easy. In this case, I believe it is not appropriate to place two implants there. There are other options. Today, I'm going to talk about it with a case later. The simplest way is to place one, but as a private practitioner, when two are missing, placing just one is very regrettable. I will try to think about a solution to place two. But I believe placing one would give better outcome. Why don't you think about this case and share with us if you have a good idea in the real-time chatting window? Let's see how our masters have dealt with similar cases. Dr. Son Young Hui, would you like to go first? Yes, this is a common case. In order to resolve the narrow space mesodistally, single fixture and the cantilever prosthesis is the easiest and uh, very stable solution if they cannot be done. For instance, if the bite force is too strong, the bite force should be considered for cantilever the second option is using narrow fixtures. We also need to consider some factors. I brought some cases for these two, and uh, what factors need to be considered will be explained. The first one is a single fixture. One fixture is installed and the cantilever is used. It can be a mesial or distal cantilever. As you know, I'm not a prosthodontist, so I don't know about the prosthodontics that much. 
the meso cantilever is more stable when the bite force is strong. Distal cantilever is a little bit unfavorable, but still, sometimes we have to use distal cantilever sometimes. The first patient, number 44 and 45, are missing. The width is very narrow. Placing two regular fixtures would be impossible. On the CT, buccal lingual width is okay, and the bone quality is not bad, and the bone height is pretty good. So this is the intraoral picture of the patient. Mesial cantilever is needed here, so the fixture is installed at 45. The size is 4.5 by 8 millimeters. It's a very simply placed prosthesis is delivered after waiting. This is a common approach when you are not skillful enough and when you are worried. This is the most stable option that you can choose. And the prosthesis is finished like this. Now, this is the current situation, and I have a place implants continuously. Number 12 and um, upper posterior prosthesis need to be delivered. Case 2, at number 21, be curious. At number 22, there is a residual root. The patients came to me to have implants here. I need to do a guided surgery and send the information to the center, but it was rejected. The reason of the rejection was two implants cannot be placed in the space. Therefore, I decided to place only one implant there. In the upper anterior, if you need to place only one implant at 11 and 12, you need to choose the site 11 because of good bone housing there. I waited for the healing. This is the answer I received. It says, placing two fixtures is not possible because of the narrow mesodistal distance and the teeth at both sides look tilted. In the planning, they are all indicated in red because they are violating the safe area, so I decided to change the plan to placing only one implant. I did the guided surgery. As you can see, one implant is placed at 11, and if you look at the angles, at number 12, implant cannot be placed. Prostatically, it is hard, so only one is placed at 11, and now the prosthesis is yet to be delivered. This cantilever is favorable in the maxillary anterior region. So using a cantilever, placing one implant can be an option. The second option is using very thin fixtures. Let me show you a case. Number 4445 post fracture. And as time passed, Number six is measly tilted. Periapical lesion is quite serious. Narrow fixtures were planned for this patient. Extraction is made. Sorry to mention another company's fixtures. This is another company's 3.3 fixtures. GBR is done. This is how they are placed using narrow fixtures the problem can be addressed um, MS or 3.0 fixtures can be used but uh, I've never placed the one body implant in the posterior region I usually use a two piece implants I use this fixture only in this case so the surgery is completed this is a similar case at number 14 and 15 you can see number 3 the apex is rather thick and the root is very thin. Placing two is very difficult as they are not in safe area. So uh, we use the guided surgery. 3.5 by 10 millimeters is planned. 
Safety margin is reduced from 1.5 to 0.8 millimeters, and the distance between the fixtures is 1.7 millimeters. According to the guide, initial drilling is done, fixtures were placed, the GBR is done and finished. 3.3 millimeter fixtures are inserted barely, so the narrow fixtures are used. After four months, prosthesis was delivered. Now it is being followed up. Using the narrow fixtures, we need to consider the material of the fixture in terms of the strength. Fractures can happen much more frequently with the narrow fixtures. This patient is a congenital missing case. Buccolingual plus mesial distal with problem. And then I need to use narrow fixtures only. In this case, I use the narrow fixtures. It's a simple, simpler than we think. You can use a cantilever by reducing the number of fixtures, and uh, you can use narrow fixtures. For narrow fixtures, you need to think about the bite force and the lateral force and the strength of the material. One body implant can be a good option. But one body implant, if it is not placed properly or if it is placed in the wrong direction because of the bone housing problem, the problem can get bigger. So personally, I have not used this treatment method. The narrow fixtures compared to regular or wide fixtures, the strength can be increased or it can be increased to grade 5, even though the strength has increased. Narrow fixtures are weaker in all aspects. 3.3 can never be placed at number 6 because of narrow space. Only up to number 5 narrow fixtures can be placed. Thank you. Dr. Son showed a very good case and looks very easy, but it is a very hard job to place them like that even though they are narrow implants. When you try to place an implant with the cantilever in mind, you end up placing it at the center easily. So it is a, not an easy placement. We need to make a choices. Placing a wide implant with a cantilever or placing two narrow implants. Both of them can overcome problems biologically. However, which one do you think is weaker in terms of mechanical problem? Personally, I cannot say cantilever has a more mechanical strength. And placing two can be mechanically stronger. But we need to consider so many things. Where to apply the lateral force, the shape, and the patient's bite force. So many variables need to be considered. Which one is better? I cannot definitely say. If you place two, it's harder to periodontally manage them. What do you think? When we place two periodontally, it can be hard to manage compared to placing one. The answer can be different depending on to what you're comparing it. I showed you the cases, why the fixture one white fixture could not be placed in those cases. Most of the cases, I tried to use the one guide and sent the information to the center. And the answer that came to me said two cannot be placed for the case with narrow fixtures and the one with the cantilever as well. It also said even drilling a regular hole is not possible. It's the same for the case with premolar. 
in the mandible with residual root. So I had no choice but to use narrow fixtures. If you can place a white fixture, cantilever is not a bad option. I cannot dare say which one is better over which. I don't have such cases many times. I'm impressed by Dr. Son's placement. Even with the narrow implants, the distance between them can be a problem. The space is not big enough. Even narrow implants, the distance between them should be considered. And the Dr. Son placed them closer to the natural teeth. And the fabricating prosthesis is also very important. Thank you very much. Dr. Park Jong Hyun, would you introduce your cases? Let me introduce my case. This is the x ray of the case under discussion. I drew this picture. If the patient is my patient, I would place two 3.0 MS fixtures. The biggest strength of the MS fixture is that the distance between the fixtures and the prosthesis portion is very thin, therefore we have wider available space. The biggest problem of it is angled abutment cannot be used. When we place the implants, we have to consider whether prosthesis is possible or not, therefore one MS guide should be used. If you place MS fixture, there's another benefit. We cannot ideally place implants like this, except when you use the guide. Sometimes the distance between them is very short like this. 3.5 millimeter diameter two-piece fixtures. Compared to that, this is better. Congenital missing case at locations 43 and 44. A deciduous canine is extracted. Two MS fixtures are placed. The distance looks appropriate. The biggest weakness of this one body MS fixture. There is no other options but immediate loading. When you can acquire good initial stability, there is uh, no problem. However, if you make a slight mistake in drilling or identifying the bone quality, the initial stability cannot be achieved. Then immediate loading is not possible. It's easy to do immediate loading in mandible, but in the maxilla, I don't think so. The biggest weakness of one body fixture is you don't have any other option but immediate loading. I believe I chose the best option in this narrow space, biologically or mechanically. After one year and seven months, they are very well maintained. I really love to use one body fixtures. Once it is also integrated, there is no problem of micro movement, micro gap, or screw loosening. After osteo integration is very stable. Ostem produces up to 3.0 ms and I hope they have 3.5. Dr. Son artfully placed narrow fixtures. There are some differences in diameters of 3.3, 3.5, and 3.6. As I analyzed the case under discussion, one guided drill's stop is 5.1 millimeters, so a guide can be used. It's very hard to place ideally like this, so a guide should be used. With a perfect placement, if you use just a 4.5 a transfer abutment, it is um, invading into the adjacent tooth as it is indicated in different color. We have to reduce the tooth for the prosthesis. Use the thinnest 4.0, you can do the prosthesis. Barely the prosthesis is possible when they are placed perfectly in the narrow space. Rather than the distance between the fixtures, 
the limitation in the space for prosthesis is more problematic. When the placement is not perfect like this, and this is not awfully placed, 4.5 diameter transfer abutment cannot be used for the prosthesis. The hot trend these days is the customized abutment. The two-piece abutment requires screw space. Thus, there is a limitation in the reduction. I was really impressed by Dr. Son's prosthesis using the custom abutment. Only highly skilled prosthodontists can create embrasure in such a narrow space. Even in this figure that I drew, it is very difficult to create the embrasure space here. In this case, we can choose the rigid abutment. I don't use it quite often, but there is some attractiveness compared to the two-piece abutment. Even after preparation or milling, the side wall remains thick. For embrasure, the space can be secured. That is possible only with the rigid abutment. I don't have this case, so I borrowed it from my colleague doctor. Two narrow fixtures are placed in a narrow space and rigid abutments are connected, so there is enough space for the gap between the teeth. As Dr. Son talked about, this is about the mesial cantilever. I don't have a lot of experience with that. My excuse is that it is mechanically unfavorable. The actual reason is that when I try to place an implant considering the space for the cantilever, I still end up placing it in the middle of the space as I try not to go too close to the adjacent tooth. So regarding the cantilever prosthesis, I believe it is mechanically weak and it is difficult for me to place an implant on one side of the space. I still try to understand the how much the mechanical weakness can cause clinical problems. I use cantilever only in the lower anterior region. I extracted the number 31 and 32. I placed one fixture. An adjacent tooth is not very good. I tried to place it some distance away from that tooth. As expected, the tooth broke down. These days, social distancing is very important, so uh, the distancing between the natural tooth and implant is very important. I chose the cantilever. The implant was not at all affected by the bad tooth, which got better after end treatment. The cause of the problem is the exposed periodontium at the cervical. If I place two fixtures here, the problem would have gotten worse. What I want to say here is that Compared to the mechanical problem of using the cantilever, placing two implants can create more frequent biological problem. This is about placing an implant at the center of the space. It's actually unintentionally placed that way. It has distance from the adjacent teeth. As we place comfortably at number six, so we can easily place it at the center. The original plan was to place it with a cantilever, but after the placement, I realized the distal tooth has apex lesion, which I didn't like it at all. That can create problems later, so I suggested uh, endo treatment to the patient, but the patient did not want it to be treated because there's no problem with the tooth. So I moved the fixture to the center, distancing it from the bad tooth. Creating a groove on the abutment is important. We need to make 
the maximum groove on the abutment to create the shape of teeth, it doesn't look aesthetic. But with the lesion in the adjacent tooth, it is still maintained properly for over four years. Eventually, when we extract number 26, it will be a little bit of a headache to design prosthesis. I analyzed the horizontal space of the panorama of the case under discussion, how long the space should be to place a fixture of 4.0 mm in diameter, 13 mm in the occlusal surface, 15 mm at the cervical area to place 4.0 diameter implant. I analyzed two properly placed implants. Digital scanner measures the distance very accurately. As Dr. Kim byung won said, measurement with the panorama is not very accurate. It's 13, 13.5 millimeters to place regular diameter implants and 15 millimeters at the cervical area to ensure the long-term prognosis. The gap should be at least like this. The key point here is that how we can set the gap between the teeth. If that's too narrow, we need to ensure the gap even using the rigid abutment. This is an embarrassing case. In the past, I focused on mechanical aspects and I chose thick implants and I did the prosthesis. I regret that. It was done in 2017 and um, it has been used without a problem for four years. But um, periodontal problem can occur at any time. Summary. If I were to treat the case under discussion, first I would consider placing two MS fixtures. After placing them, I would check the initial stability for immediate loading. If immediate loading can be done, I would complete the surgery. If the initial stability is weak for immediate loading, I would place two 3.5 mm fixtures and I will check whether they can be possible. I have a private practice, so I want to place two implants where two teeth are missing to get proper treatment fee. If they cannot be done, if the position is not appropriate, I will think about placing one at the center. Cantilever is a good option, and I know papers say there's no clinical problems, but I'm not ready to use the cantilever yet. The last option is using two fixtures of regular or wide diameters, just like my embarrassing case. Thank you for the case introduction. The dentist who sent us the case under discussion is asking about the occlusal guide. What do you think? When we place narrow implants or when we use cantilever, how do we determine the occlusal points? I determined the priority of options before, but uh, I believe um, all of them would not have very good outcome. There are two reasons for implant failures. One is biological reasons. Number two is mechanical fractures, which is more happening. I thought differently in the past, but recently I came to think if biological factors are not respected, failures will be bound to occur and mechanical failures are the secondary matters. 
We don't have a lot of options available. Two 3.5 millimeter fixtures, if they can be placed like the drawings I showed you, it would be the best. I have a question. Placing two 3.5 millimeter diameter fixtures. You said that's the second option to increase the strength. 3.0 millimeter fixtures is the first option. We have TS 3.0 fixtures. So what's the difference between 3.0 TS fixture versus MS fixture? Do you think 3.0 millimeter TS fixtures can be used here? I don't have a 3.0 and 3.5 millimeter diameter fixtures in my clinic. What I have in my clinic is 3.6 millimeter diameter non hex fixtures. We have regular connections, we don't have mini connections. That's beneficial. I don't really have non hex connection data. I just have my personal experience, which is not much. But personally, I believe non hex 3.6 millimeter diameter fixture, usually clinically, we experience not much of horizontal fractures, but we experience a lot of vertical fractures. In that respect, non hex fixtures are more beneficial. And Dr. Park gave us very good summary. As Dr. Son said, I have never used the one body MS fixtures in premolar areas. If I were to do surgery for the case under discussion, I would opt for number four, mesial cantilever. I don't do prosthesis. So I wanted to ask prosthodontist to deliver the cantilever. But hearing the discussion here, I'm not sure anymore about that. 3.5 or 3.0 implants can be placed. But as Dr. Park said, if they're too close with each other, if the distance is too close, that can create a problem. MS implant placement in the premolar area, I don't really have experience. And uh, prosthesis would be a problem. I was thinking about choosing mesial cantilever, but uh, I'm not sure anymore. Dr. Kim Gyeong Won, you have prepared a case. This is not the case I placed the implants. I accidentally found this patient. There were two implants on a lower first molar area. I was surprised, but the condition is very good. I thought that the space was made through ortho treatment. If you look at uh, the other side, number 46 is missing. TS 4.0 diameter TS implant is placed. Number 36 is tilted. If you look at this case, so far as the space can be maintained in a patient like this who was young, if the space is pretty good, placing two implants can be a good option, but this is a rare case. So three master dentists gave us good advices. Going back to the case under discussion, uh, would you give us the last remarks based on what have been discussed? I briefly mentioned this before. I haven't thought about placing two MS fixtures, considering 11.5 millimeter space, regular or narrow implants. Placing two 3.5 millimeter implants would not be easy. Placing one implant at number five with mesial cantilever, it, that would be a good option. But Dr. Park said it's problematic, so I don't know. I didn't say 
the cantilever is a problem, I just said I need to think about it a little bit more. Dr. Son Young Hui, just looking at the case under discussion, at number five, if the buccolingual width is enough for wide fixture, cantilever can be considered. If a mesial cantilever is not appropriate, narrow fixtures would be the only option available. Personally, rather than placing 3.5 millimeter fixtures, the stronger fixtures like a titanium alloy or grade 5 needs to be used. Ostem's 3.0 uses grade 5 titanium. So I think placing 3.0 would be better. I place a 3.0 millimeter diameter fixtures confined to anterior region when there is a lack of space or bone and I have achieved a good outcome using that approach. In general, it is not a fixture to be recommended. This is a little bit tricky. Therefore, mesial cantilever is the option I would choose. I see similar cases coming up to the SNS that I share with my colleague doctors. And um, what I'm saying in those cases is place just one implant. The problem with placing one has minimal problems compared to the problems of placing two. As Dr. Kim and Dr. Son mentioned, the only problem with that is from the private practitioner's perspective, we really want to place two when two are missing. In that case, a guide should be used. In this case discussion, we talked about how to address the problem when the space for placing an implant is narrow. I would like to thank the dentist who sent us the case to discuss, and also the three doctors here. This concludes the discussion. I am Dr. Jung Young on MC of this discussion. I will come back next time. Thank you. Thank you.